Should you save the hassle of being tied down to a property and just rent forever or is it best to pay the price of a mortgage and actually own your own home? Throughout this video we'll be going through some real life examples of my personal experience both renting and owning a home. To answer this question I'll be referring to a book that's very near and dear to my heart and that's Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad. Now in this book the author makes a controversial statement stating that a house is a liability and anyone that that's familiar with Rich Dad Poor Dad will know that the definition of a liability is something that takes money away from you and an asset is something that puts money into your pocket. Now when you're told that a house is a liability most people are quick to say that it's not because it can be a hard pill to swallow that a house that's valued at $600,000 is actually something that's going to be limiting you financially. With a house there are plenty of occasions where it will take money away from you. Obviously mortgage repayments, maintenance of the property, different types of insurances, the list goes on. But the main thing that people will say why a house is an asset and not a liability is because of the capital appreciation that it has. Of course, if you buy a home for $600,000 and then 10 years later it's valued at $800,000, on paper you may have made $200,000 if you're splitting the difference. However, it might not actually work out that way. If a home is valued at $800,000 and you don't actually have that money in your account until a buyer has agreed on that price. You might get say $750,000 or $780,000. It's not until a sale is actually signed off and the money is in your bank account you actually know how much income you'll be getting. And of course after you sell your home you're going to need somewhere to stay. You're going to need another property. And in that period of time where your home has gone from $600,000 to $800,000 all the other properties will also have increased in value so you're just buying in a more expensive market so by the time you purchase a new home after selling your old one the actual cash amount difference the actual profit that you will have made might not look so good but there are definitely occasions where a house can be an asset but it's all up to you and how you manage it we'll get into the steps needed to make a house an asset later in the video but first we'll look at the pros and cons of renting versus owning a home if you purchase a home you have something that you can call yours if you want to raise a family or settle down this is a great option for you because you don't have to share your space with other people the same way you would if you were flatting and every time you pay your mortgage you're working towards greater ownership of your home although it might be a painful process in comparison to paying your rent where that money is essentially burned every week since it's not going towards anything productive in terms of something that you will own yourself but of course the biggest thing with actually getting a home is it can be very difficult to actually get a loan from a bank. Often you will need up to a 20% deposit and with the average house price always increasing this can be a more and more challenging thing to do. Even in the far north the average value of a home is over $700,000 and if a 20% deposit is needed you'll have to have $140,000 saved up in cash and then on top of that you'll have to start doing mortgage repayments as well. So actually owning a house of your own is becoming more and more difficult. Taking a look at renting which is a lot more practical for most people you definitely need far less money for it but again that money isn't going towards anything productive besides you just being able to rent your room. But you don't have to worry about maintenance or repairing a property and there's definitely far less cost as well. There's no property maintenance, there's no mortgage repayments, there's no rates that you have to pay so at the end of each week theoretically you'll have more money left over and you also have more freedom with renting you just have to give your landlord a few weeks notice and then you can move to a new property definitely not that easy if you actually own your own home so the best way to look at if it's going to be worthwhile to buy a home or rent will be comparing how much money you would have left over each week depending on if you're owning a home or if you're renting because in theory renting can be better because you have more excess money left over every week since there's less expenses for renting and you can save more so you can generate greater income if you're investing in the stock market or potentially growing a small business as well then you have more free cash flow to invest into these things and then they can continuously snowball. So this is potentially more valid if you're younger say in your 20s and 30s and if it's later in your life you might not be as interested in doing things like stock market investing. So to compare these two we'll look at how much money you would have left over at the end of each week if you were getting $1,000 after tax so that would mean you're on a 
salary of $65,000 and you own a home worth $600,000. So this example is looking at if one person owns the property and there's no other flatmates or no other people that the bills or mortgage repayments can be split with. So jumping onto the ASB home loan calculator, if you own a property for $600,000 and you're putting down a 20% deposit, this would mean that you would have put up $120,000 and your monthly mortgage repayments would be $2,621. Some additional monthly expenses for owning a home would be internet is $80, water at $30, things like insurance $50 a month, rates $160 a month, and then finally power $100 a month if it's just one person. If you add all of these expenses up, you have to pay $760 a week. These costs will be deducted from your $1,000 a week you get from your paycheck, leaving you with $240 for any personal expenses and things like groceries or petrol. You'll be living on a tight budget to say the least, and if anything unexpected comes up, like having to repair something on the property, you won't have much money left over. Of course, maintenance costs vary depending on what kind of house you've purchased. If it's a new build versus something from the 1940s, the repairs could vary from just a broken window, which might be $150, or or there might be a major leak behind the shower which could cost thousands. In comparison to if you're renting, a fair amount that you would have to pay is $200 for rent plus bills. For most places in New Zealand, this is a fair example. Assuming you have at least four flatmates living with you, of course if you're in a place like Ponsonby in Auckland, your rent might be a little bit more, but it's a relevant cost that most people would have to pay. Personally, when I was in Auckland and living in Glenfield, my flat was $160 a week without expenses, so once you put those on top, it was about $180 to $190 per week. There was five people living in the flat and it costed $800 a week. Of course, if you're just living with your partner or maybe one other flatmate, then it's definitely gonna cost a lot more. Like the flat that I was living in, if it was $800 a week and you only had two people in there, that would be $400 that each person would have to pay. So for most people, when you're flatting, you're gonna have a couple flatmates, so it'll help to cut down those rent payments. So if you're only getting charged $200, $100 a week for rent and expenses. If you deduct that from the $1,000 a week paycheck, then you'll have $800 left over, which on paper sounds much better. You'll have a lot more free cash flow at the end of each week compared to if you were owning your home. Now, this is great because that's $800 you could put into the stock market, you could buy into cryptocurrency, you could grow a business, you could have other cash producing assets that could make money for you. But for most people, this isn't the way that they think about their money. It's more of a materialistic thing. They might use it to buy clothes or a new car, and they're not thinking about investing in the stock market or growing a business. So even if they have more money left over, it might not really be used for anything productive. And this is where owning a home can be very good because they're using that money to pay it towards something that they will eventually own instead of just spending it on material things. But you most definitely can make an asset if you're considering things like your rental income, the amount of interest that you're paying on your mortgage and where you're buying your house, how much money you actually have to put up to get the deposit together in order to own one. As a second example of owning a home but having flatmates will take another look at how much money you have left over each week. So again we'll be using the same example of having $1,000 a week left over and you owning a property worth $600,000. So it's fair to assume that a property valued at that much money would be a four bedroom. So you could be having three flatmates and charging them a fair rent of $160 each. This would mean that every week you would be collecting $580 in rental income. But of course if there's more flatmates, your monthly expenses are going to be higher, but at least then there's four people, including yourself, that are splitting the cost of these monthly expenses that are coming up. So you would definitely have to increase these, things like the water would go up to $50 a month and the power up to potentially $200 a month or more. So if you add up all these expenses, it would be $790 each week, and then you subtract the $580 of rental income, and then you're left with $210 per week that you have to pay yourself. And you can see in this example that the cost of having a home with tenants is near the same as you just renting a place for yourself. Where the cost for renting at a fair price would be $200 a week plus expenses if you're living in someone else's home or if you have tenants paying your mortgage, then you might just have to pay $210 yourself of your own money. So there's a very minimal difference between the amount that you have to pay for renting a property versus owning one if you 
have tenants that are helping you pay for that mortgage. And then also if you're doing it this way, it's much easier to build up equity in that home that you can use to get another loan from the bank to purchase a second property, which again, you can use exclusively for rental income. So thinking about home ownership like this makes it a lot more practical. Of course, this example isn't relevant for everyone. A lot of people want to own a home because they don't want to live with other people necessarily, or they might want to raise a family and it's not going to be very practical for them to have flatmates. It's definitely a case by case basis, whether or not it's better to rent or buy a home. And it all matters on you and how you manage things. Do you want flatmates to help you pay the mortgage? Are you going to buy in an expensive area where you need a large deposit and you have to have large mortgage repayments? And are you going to do a lot of renovations on the property once you buy it? So there's a lot of factors to consider on whether or not your home is going to become an asset or a liability. And it's based on your decisions and how you manage things. If you want to see the steps that I took to purchase my first home, all the way from finding the right property, getting the deposit together and getting approval from the bank, then check out this video on screen where I give you my complete guide on buying your first home in New Zealand. Remember, if you find the content helpful, make sure to drop a like for the YouTube algorithm so that more people can watch this video.